think we are yet. Okay, um, we are going to start over. We're just going to record this because we have um, someone that is losing connection. And then this is also for anybody who can't make the meeting today that wanted to. So um, thank you, Ogo and Sylvia, for your patience as we kind of sort this out. We'll just take a quick step back. Uh, just to recap, the goal of we are just talking about event badging in this badging uh, to be a badger. That's what this is, new badge orientation. Um, the goal is really just to give a signal, let the event organizer signal that they they care about DEI and that they're really trying to make an awesome event um, as awesome as they can based on their own limitations. Um, I was just getting ready to start the difference, so uh, we'll jump right into that. Um, so as you know, events are you know pretty straightforward. They start and they end, and then if the event comes around again the next year, they have to reapply for a new badge. Um, but projects are ongoing, so like we have to figure out like what is that? How do we do that? Do we have a badge that expires, or how do we do that? Um, defining a project is also tricky because everybody kind of defines themselves differently. So like in chaos, we there's a lot going on in chaos. We have um, we have the chaos org that could be our project. We have the badging org that could be our project. It could be everything. It could be just the software Augur or Grimoire Lab or you know one of one subset of our repos. So there wasn't like an easy way to just define a project. Um, and they also don't really have that information around DEI usually in one place. Um, they may not even have a website projects. Um, so we wanted to give them a place to, to do that because, you know, an event usually has that all kind of centralized in one place. Um, projects are also just a lot more complicated than an event event. You know, again, an event is a thing. It happens. It's a couple days. It's over. But new projects are very complicated, and also there are so many more projects, like thousands and hundreds of thousands of projects out there. Um, so we couldn't manually review every single application. So, um, so, but there's you know a lot less, a lot fewer, I should say, um, events out there. So it does allow us to have have a, a way to manually um, manually go over those applications. Okay, so the overview, if you're not familiar, um, it does allow event organizers to apply for a badge and tell us how they are centering DEI in their event. It is based on DEI metrics that we have developed in chaos. Uh, so if you're wondering like kind of what the connection is, that's the connection there is the metrics are being used to um, for them to tell us on their application. Uh, we have two separate human reviewers for each each application that comes in and that would be you we do everything on github so it's all open and transparent everybody can see how the process goes and kind of what the comments were <clears throat> and then we have a list um, that is kept of who has earned a badge so in theory somebody could just copy the picture of the badge and put it on their website without going through the application process but we do keep a central list so if someone wanted to verify then they could because we have the list of who actually has done the done the applications. Um, Gloria, just so you know, we are recording in case you lose connection again, so you can just come back and rewatch that. So no worries at all. Uh, we do have different levels of badges. Um, there are uh, they're based on how many checks they get uh, on the whole checklist. So it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Um, here are the levels. So if they have 80% or more of the checks checked off in our in our review, then they're going to get a gold badge. Um, and if they have 60 to 80, they get a silver and then passing or pending. I would say probably 90% come in at this gold level. Uh, we do have a few silvers and that's totally fine. That's completely fine. And that's usually based on budget limitations, like they can't do everything that they want to do. Um, but, you know, again, that's completely fine. So I will just stop for a second and see if we have any questions on anything so far. Okay, so far so good. Um, actually, I need to open this up, make sure I have the chat open. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we have um, actually we have a new team lead and maintainer so i'm going to put Adinka in here as well, she is brand new she just we just did our first ones yesterday so congratulations to 
Adayika Arasanya, who is also now a team, a team lead. Okay. Um, Enoch is the one, uh, and Adayinka also, I'm going to actually put her in here. Uh, she has been doing a lot of work for the badging bot, and we'll talk about what that badging bot does. And then Kingsley has been leading the badging website redesign. So we are redesigning the website right now. Um, I think it's almost done. So uh, we're going to be still using the old way um, that this will be changing. So right now, how it goes is that an event organizer fills out an application. Um, we ask them how they're centering DEI in their event. As I mentioned, it's based on chaos DEI metrics. And again, that's the, the um, connection. Um, an issue then, they open an issue in our badging org, org on GitHub. Um, Elizabeth, <laughs> I gotta change this too. Um, Elizabeth, Adega, or Ruth, we assign two badgers. And right now that's a manual process. Um, Adi Inca and I talked yesterday about trying to make that a little more automated because it, it's not hard. It's just another manual step that we do. Um, and then your job as a um, an event badger would be to basically verify the information that they're giving us in their applications, um, checking links to make sure that they've you know given us the proper information. And then, of course, if you have questions, you can ask the event organizer in the issue itself. We are going to go through a test one so you can kind of see what all of that looks like. Any questions so far? Okay. And then the second half of the workflow is when you're finished, you can tag Elizabeth or Ruth or Adinka, and I can't remember her tag, um, but I'll add that later. Um, just to let us know that you're finished with the with the review. Um, we run what's called a result command. So we just literally type that in as, as a comment in the issue. And then badging bot then figures out what the preliminary score is. Um, I usually say if it's, if it's a gold badge, if they're getting a gold badge, they can't really do better than that. I mean, as far as badges go, they can, you know, maybe if they don't have a hundred, they could, you know, do something else. But I mean, for the badge purposes, they're going to get a gold. So if it's a gold, I usually just run the end command um, and don't check with them. If it's like a silver and they, I want to see if maybe they want to improve something before we issue the final badge, then we, I'll type that in as an issue. I mean, as a command in the issue, comment in the issue, um, just to check with them and see if they do want to make any changes um, based on feedback or you know something that we weren't able to check that they weren't able to provide. Um, we will go back and forth with them as long as it takes until they're ready to issue the badge. Um, then we, we uh, one of us three, Elizabeth, myself, uh, Ruth, or Arinka will run this um, end command. And again, it's just a comment in the issue. Uh, and, it, and then the bot generates the badge and the markdown and everything. And then it will close the issue and add them to the list of badged projects. So all of that is automated. Okay, so let's do a uh, test one together real quick. So I'm gonna go to chaos.community, not WP admin. So right now, this is where the um, application is and it will be moving to the new, uh, the new site. This is the new site right here. But if you go to event badging and you hit apply for a badge, it takes you back here. So eventually this will be a little bit smoother because it is, you'll see, it's kind of a pain for organizers right now. So you'll see as we do this, like that, it could be a lot easier. Um, this is the link where I am right now, if you want to look at it. Um, you can also put some of your own test projects in here as, as we're done. Um, just let me know so I can kind of remove them from the list of badged projects because we don't want to include anybody that's just a test. Um, but this does again you know kind of summarize how everything works and why you would want to do it and all of that so there are some requirements before they can apply um, they're pretty simple they are um, we ask that they are about open source technologies that the event is and that that person submitting the application is an organizer of the event um, 
and then also that we have to have some public information like otherwise we can't verify if everything's private so it has to be public we have to have some kind of contact information and then they have to have a code of conduct like that's just the baseline you have to have a code of conduct so um so then this is the submission guidelines and this just kind of tells them how to do it um, and just some general like make sure you communicate with reviewers um, and we are telling them you know we're gonna this is how it goes we're gonna have manual reviews for you and all of that so basically just what we talked about um, they do have to have a github account which is kind of a pain for people um, but that's kind of the way that we keep it transparent and collaborative is by doing it openly on github so it's kind of like a, a small barrier but we think one that's important um just because transparency is huge for this we think so that's why we require a github account let's do uh we're gonna say this is an in-person event which is gonna be our test event and our event name is the awesome conf um, we are at awesomeconf.com, and yes, I am an organizer of our test event. Um, so uh, again, I'm playing the role of an event organizer right now. Um, so I'm going to say yes, my event commits continuously to um, continuously improving demographic diversity. So um, we ask at registration. If measuring your demographics at your event, provide an example of an opt-out option. Um, I'm not going to actually fill all these in because it would take us forever <laughs> to do. Um, so we'll just say um, X, Y, Z here. Okay, X, Y, Z here. And here's the criteria that we're going to use um, to give them checks on this. The next, so this is a metric right here under event demographics that's a metric and you under the um, references you can see there's a link to the metric there's um, some other information for them if they're not sure like what this means. We have some references for them same thing under here, um, this is a metric inclusive experience at event that is a metric that chaos provides. Uh, so here's some things that we ask them if they are using feedback. Um, accessibility, we just touch on this right now that's going to change um, in the future soon, but for now we're just asking uh, about these things specifically. Code of conduct again we require that, but we want to hear more about that, and that is a metric uh, for the in our one of our metrics in chaos. Um, so we want to make sure that it's posted and then here's a link. The next one is called diversity access tickets, and this is a way for them to level the playing field a little bit for folks who have been traditionally excluded from these events. So um, we kind of leave it up to them to decide what that means. Maybe it's for um, parents, you know, who did not have a way to attend the event. Maybe it's for um, folks from marginalized backgrounds, LGBTQ plus folks, um, people of color, like whatever it is that they're defining, how they're leveling that play, playing field, um, that's what we wanted to know about. Um, the final metric is family friendliness. So we ask them about how they're making it easier for families to attend, whether it be childcare or, um, oh, Sylvia, I'm gonna mute you real quick because I'm hearing some background noise. Thank you. No worries. Um, so yeah, so for instance, one way that somebody can create a family friendly environment is I've, I just went to a conference a couple weeks ago, and every time you bought an, a, like a regular registration, they added a free companion ticket, they called it for anyone 18 and under. So that was a real easy way for them to signal um, that families are welcome here, and we're going to make it easier because we're going to let your kids come with you to the event. And we can, like we want that we we welcome that so even though they weren't able to provide childcare facilities at the event, which is super expensive and kind of um, a, a liability. Um, there are other ways that events can be more family friendly. 
and then we ask for, for links. So that's it. So these are the five metrics that we ask about right now. Event, uh, sorry, six, no, five. Event demographics, inclusive experience, code of conduct, diversity access tickets, and family friendliness. Those are the five metrics that we're asking them about. And when they're finished, <clears throat> they have to, then they're gonna have to do this part manually, which also kind of stinks. <clears throat> so that's something else we're trying to make better. So basically they have to copy this. This is like the what's going they're going to use to open their event or open the issue in GitHub. So we copy that and then we're going to um, go on over to GitHub and it's already filled this in for me and then I can hit paste. So it's not super hard. It's just kind of an extra step for the organizer. And then I will submit new issue. And here's my application. And here's the badging bot has um, said, make sure that you have read through the requirements and guidelines and then understood your role as a badging applicant. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and see if we have questions. So that was all from the side of an event organizer who is applying for a badge. That's the way their experience goes. So now I think we can switch gears and now look at it from um, a badging application or a badger, a badger's point of view. So as a badger, your first contact with this event application would be when you get assigned the issue. So I will assign myself. I'm going to assign my blessing since she's in here also. So these are our two badgers for this application. So the bot will create a checklist for each of us. So here's my checklist. And here's Mary Blessings checklist. So the only thing I have to worry about as a badger are the things on my checklist. This is the only thing that I'm looking at really. Um, it the badging bot also even takes what how they answered this and adds it to my checklist so I don't even have to scroll up or anything I can just look at this comment right here that's all I care about for me. So what i'm going to do is then just go through these check marks so is the event about open source technologies and systems, yes, it is. Is it publicly available on a website, yes, it is is the code of conduct publicly available, yes, and is the applicant an organizer, yes. Um, so then I'm going to go down here to the first metric, which was event demographics, and I'm going to look at the answers that this event application um, has given us. And I'm going to say yes, they have a process uh, actually this needs to change, but yeah. Yes, we're they're allowed to opt out people are allowed to opt out and yes, they give a text box box example so it's basically just these questions down here. Um, and then the next metric, inclusive experience at event. So we're gonna go back, does the event request feedback? Yes, they do, and they set it up here. So I'm gonna go check, check. We'll just make sure, we'll just assume that they're doing everything because it is an awesome conference. <laughs> so um, the next metric is code of conduct. So we're just gonna check these because this event is awesome. And they are providing diversity access tickets. They are family friendly. Okay, so now my review is done. So, uh, oh, Sylvia, I just see your comment. Um, what, what do you want us to go over? Tell me more. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, yes, before you um, said it came to this part, you were saying something before this um, part. I didn't get that because my network was just pushing me out. So I didn't really get what you were saying in the previous um, explanation you were making before you came here. Yeah, okay, no worries. So when the application, uh, I don't know if I can go back, let me try and see what happens. Okay, so when I filled out the application on the chaos website, it gave me a block of text based on my answers that I had uh, put in the application. 
Um, and then I had to come over here to GitHub and paste this in a new issue. So that's where this came from. Let's see if that'll, yes. Yeah, so, okay, so we, um, oh, look, it kept all my answers. So I went to this application and I'm giving all the answers, blah, 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 blah. And then as an application uh, or as an event organizer, I would hit submit. And then it, it creates this, it generates this code, which I have to copy and then move to GitHub as an event organizer. So this is kind of what it will look like as an event organizer. And then I would just hit submit new issue, if that makes sense. I think that's all you missed. Yeah, yeah, I'm following now, thank you. So, oh yeah, so as you see then, here's, here's our issue. It's right here, this is our test event. And it says review begin, which means that um, it's currently in the process. It's been assigned and it's in the process of being reviewed. So um, I have done all of my checks. Mary Blessing would do all her checks, which we're gonna do for her right now. So as you can see, you're really just kind of verifying that you know what they've said. You would maybe click on the links that they've provided or verify the information on the website, uh, the event website that um, you know, there is a code of conduct, that there is a way uh, to report it, that people do have to require to accept the code of conduct. Um, all of that. And then as a reviewer, you would say um, any of us, Elizabeth, myself, Ruth, um, or Adinka, any of us you can tag and just said, uh, just say I'm finished with my review. And then, um, then we will, one of us will run what we call the result command, just to test and see what the result would be. And so the badging bot has calculated that they got 100% of the checks that there were two reviewers. So they got all these checks from both reviewers. So they are doing pretty good. And then I, myself, Ruth, or Adinka, one of the maintainers here, will do the end command, which will then issue the badge itself. It makes it review end. Here's the badge that the code that the people can use to put wherever they want. They can put it on a website, they can put it in a repo, they can put it wherever they want. Um, and that will just verify, like, that's what their badge looks like. And if someone clicks on that, oh, <laughs> if someone clicks on that, it will take them to our README. And now the issue is closed and everything's finished. So if we go back over here, it's not here anymore, but it is in the README as a, a new event that has gotten a, a gold badge. And if someone wants to verify and see how that went, they can. They can do that. Okay, what questions do we have? Yeah, go ahead, Mary Blessing. You're muted. We can't hear you. If you oh, I wanted to, yeah. Well, I squeezed up my hand, but I want to have a question. Okay, go ahead, Ogo. Okay, good day. Um, I just want to ask, um, so after giving the badge, does it have an expiring date? Or is it dependent on the, the time frame of the event? Or the badge has, event badge has the same expiring date for all events? That's my question. Okay, let me see if I understood you properly. So you're asking if the event badge is just for that event or if it's for all of the, like if it has it for every year. Is that what you're asking? Yes, like if the event is a yearly event, will that singular uh, badge be for the entire um, event? Like if it's happening another year, would they have to apply again? They do. Well, that yeah, they have to reapply. So it's just for this event that happened on that day. Um, yep, that's a great question. 
Thank you. What other questions do we have? Do we do we want to look at one that's like an actual one, like a real one, just to see kind of what the actual answers might be <laughs> for somebody? That might be helpful. Let's do that. Yes. Okay, so here is here's an application that we got uh, called Berlin Buzzwords, and you you may have actually heard of this conference. Um, I think we have some chaotics that were are speaking there. I'm not sure, um, but we have. Um, so this was the application they filled out, and this is like the actual words that they gave us. So this is how they measure. This is um, how they opt out. This is um, like we ask. They ask, "What are your pronouns?" and all of that. Um, this is the feedback that they gave. Here's the report. Like they they report on diversity and inclusion in their event, which is really great. So you know you can see like what kind of oh it's okay, Lamy. We've been um, recording anyway, so it's all totally fine. You can go back and watch the beginning if you want. I don't think much has changed actually from when you were a, a badger. Um, I will talk about the changes in just a second, but yeah, you're good. So here they, um, the organizers of Berlin Buzzwords are telling us about their code of conduct and here it is. So as a reviewer, I would like click on this and say, you know, I'd be clicking on these links that they're giving and just say, oh yeah, okay, here's the code of conduct. Here's what it looks like. It's more than just like be nice to each other, which <laughs> sometimes code of conduct, that's all they say is just like be nice to each other, which isn't super helpful. <laughs> so. Um, they have a person to contact like they're they're doing pretty well what to do if you're witness how how they handle it like all of that they talk about. So um, oops. So yeah so that's just kind of one uh, one of their answers. Oh, and I have to hit the back button. To get back to their application. Um, so this one uh yes and so forth and so on and so forth and they did not really have any family friendliness here so they didn't get checks they did not get a check there or they did not check themselves there um, and then you'll see kafaya did her review um, she checked everything except when it came down to family friendliness there really wasn't anything to check because they weren't really doing much which is totally fine like people do what they can do um, so they did not get that credit um, Victory is going to do hers as well, and then um, if we so if I were going to if I hit results now, it would give them like less than fifty percent because it's seeing like all of these checks that have not been checked yet, and it's just because Victory hasn't done a review yet. So that's why we kind of wait till both are done and we can we can run it. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know if you saw, so she just said, hey, thanks for your application. Plain Schwartz team, which is the event organizer that submitted the application. Good luck with your event. And then she tells me, hey, I'm done with my review. And then we just pinged Victory yesterday because she probably didn't see the that she was assigned the issue, which also kind of happens. And it's like, if that happens to you as a, view, a reviewer, don't feel bad. Um, it happens a lot because notifications just get buried and everything else. So don't worry, no biggie. So yeah. Um, let's see, let's see one that has been closed. So you can kind of see how that went. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this one had some comments, it looks like. So there was some back and forth, which you can also do as a reviewer. If something isn't clear or you aren't sure, you are absolutely welcome um, and encouraged to reach out to the person who submitted the event and just ask for clarification. So Andrea, um, so Tetris and Kevin did theirs. And they, in this event, they don't provide these diversity access tickets, which is totally, again, totally fine. Um, and then Kevin, Kevin did want some clarification. Can I get some clarity on how you're handling this text input question? Um, I went ahead and did a result they got 80%, which is a gold badge. Um, so I went ahead and issued the badge. If they if they do come back and make changes, I just said, let us know. Like they're not gonna get a higher badge, but um, you know, we've given them some food for thought. We've given them something to kind of consider for next time or in this event even. So if you see something like they could do better that you've just kind of 
based on your own experience or have seen from other events, um, that's perfectly valid to put here. It's it's supposed to be a collaboration and a partnership, not like we're judging you. <laughs> like we don't we don't want to be the judge here. Um, we just want this to be more of a partnership, um, and that we're like all working together to create more inclusive events. So that's kind of our take as well, just to, for clarification. So we don't try to be very judgy and like you're doing good, you're doing bad, even though I just said they're doing good. Um, because, you know, again, like people are limited by their budgets, they're limited by their time. You know, a lot of these people are not professional organizers. They're just volunteers who are just running an event. So, you know, we got to give them a little grace. Um, yeah, so, so whenever you see an open app, these are all open applications right here. Um, and again, if you get assigned one, that's where you'll find it. Let's see what else. I guess that's about it. Um, we do have some next steps if you've kind of looked through all this and decide that, yeah, you wanna be a badger. Um, Cause again, you are not on the hook for anything. You are not committing to anything right now. It's just if you um, wanted to get in more information is kind of what we're doing here. So here is a file that you can copy uh, into your own Google Drive if you um, are interested in. This is how you would actually formally join the badger team. So there is an info form to fill out and it has your um, your name and your GitHub username. We have not been using this signal group really. We started to and it just kind of died away. Nobody really used it. So if, if, if you wanna put it there, great, but it's not very active. We've, we've been doing everything in the badging channel in Slack. Um, you can decide too that like you um, only wanna do one if needed. Like you don't really have the time um, to do these and so you're just like as needed and then if there's any comments you can so what this will do is signal to me to add you to the um, repo as a, a collaborator so you can actually get to things and get assigned um, and then it'll add you to our spreadsheet list that we keep of all of the badgers Um, what else is in here? You're probably, if you're not in the badging channel already, that's a highly recommended place to be. And the DEI channel, if you would like, because that's, that's where the metrics get developed and those, you know, the related conversations, we usually do talk about badging in that meeting too. So if you um, are able to attend that meeting, that'd be great. Um, at the very least, joining that channel is also helpful. You do not need to. We have badgers that that's all they do is bad like they just badge and they don't really participate in chaos in any other way, which is totally fine. Uh, so you, you know that's also a, an option for you too. <laughs> if you just want to be a badger and you you don't want to be in the rest of chaos that's totally fine. You can read through the um, the metrics if you want to like I said you don't have to be super familiar with them because the questions are already kind of outlined for you in the checklist. But if you want to know uh, like kind of what those metrics are about, then here's where you would find them or on our website there, it, it comes from the same place. And then you can also just go back and read some of the closed issues. Um, if you want to see how things went like what comments were there how people did and then again attending that DEI working group meeting is super helpful. And we, I can find uh, I can link that to you if you would like to do that. I will also say one more thing. Oh, actually, let me stop and see what questions we have. As my dog snores in the background. <laughs> it, you know, and after this, if you do see some or you do have some questions, obviously, you know, reach out to me, put them in badging. Somebody will answer. Um, yeah. This is, like I said, a, a very uh, informal thing. It's not a big deal. It's really not that deep. So, yeah, it's all good. Um, if you're curious about the time commitment, we try to do, if we can, we try to do like one a month at the max. So it maybe takes, an application maybe takes 15, 20 minutes to go through and, and um, verify everything. Um, so it would be like that would be the commitment is like one of those a month, maybe two, maybe two, but we really try not to do that many for people. I think right now we are running at about 
two a month for people because we have um sometimes we get waves of them like the linux foundation they do all their events through us and they figure out all of their events at once <laughs> for the year so they apply for all of them at once <laughs> so so we did get like a a big wave of them a couple times a year when the when the lf figures out what they're doing then they come to us <clears throat> and so we we do get some waves which we're finishing up one right now so people have had to two i think in march but it's pretty rare and then one final thing i will note actually two final things i will note uh, we are going to be adding more metrics three more metrics uh, to the application which is just on me to do and i haven't had a time i haven't had time to do it we're going to be adding event accessibility so really asking them a lot more about how they're uh attending to like folks in wheelchairs for instance folks with um hearing impairment or vision impairment um how they're just like making it more accessible for everybody so that's one metric we're adding we're also adding public health and safety so and this is around like air quality and mostly around like COVID restrictions, if they're requiring masks, if they are like the, the venue has like air circulation. Um, <clears throat> we actually are partnering with another group who asks questions in great detail about that and gives like the, a separate badge for that. So we just will ask them, have you gone over here and done this other badging program? If you have, you get a check. If you haven't, that's fine. It's just one check in the whole list. So if they haven't, it's okay. Um, but we just want to like get them thinking about it get them thinking about how they're handling masks and making things um like the air better or quality uh better for everybody for folks with you know like immune disorders and think people who are susceptible to COVID and other things like that's a big deal like that will keep somebody from going to an event if they think that they are in danger so so we ask about that and then the third one is called event location inclusivity and this is a metric around the the city and the place where the event is happening so if it's a place that's like not super friendly to like lgbtq folks um then it, we're not going to say don't have the event here but we're going to say how are you communicating that to your attendees and giving them the information so they can decide whether or not they want to take that risk if they are a part of this you know demographic group so we, you know, again, we try not to be judgy and say, well, if you're doing this, it's bad because, you know, event organizers are limited, you know, by budget, by their own, where their own locations, like where they are and stuff. So um, we're not going to say something is bad or good, but we just want them to think about it and think about how they communicate things to their attendees to let the attendees decide how they want to, if they want to attend. And if they do, what precautions they would take. Like if I, you know, if I want, to wear a mask, I want to know, you know what I mean? Like, I want to know how they're attending to that so that I know if I need to wear a mask or not and things like that. So those are the three we're adding, but as a badger, you would get information about that. You don't have to actually know that right now. I probably shouldn't have even said anything because <laughs> it's just like more information to you. So yeah, but that will, it is coming soon. So as a potential badger, you, you might want to know that. Um, all the links that I have put out today are they're pinned at the top of the slack channel uh, for badging, which I can actually let me show you how that where that is, maybe. Okay, don't look at my slack i'm gonna, actually i'm going to stop recording in case something's on my slack that shouldn't be. <laughs> so.